Almost ready. Sweet ass. Right, shalom, shalom. First, I'd like to give all praises unto Yahweh, Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Waharuk HaKadash, and double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Billstone. And honors to you brothers out there in the highways and the byways, teaching this word in all sincerity and truth. <clears throat> and, um, you know, we're going to go into John, the first chapter, and the 10th verse, you know, because you had this um, this agent of confusion, you know, Volcap Malone, and, you know, he, he had that video where he was declaring victory over the Hebrew Israelites, and as usual, you know, he was trying to reinforce and push that goofy Christian doctrine that basically says that regardless of your seed regardless of whether you are of the seed of jacob you can become a son of god and you can be saved and all this bs which is erroneous according to the scriptures the only people who are eligible for salvation are the israelites right the physical seed of abraham isaac and jacob and that's what it's always been the Lord deals with a physical seed on earth, right? So we're going to go into the, the scriptures and um, deal with it, you know, as as we should, right? We ain't, we ain't got to go mad and go crazy, which is what they want. We just go into the scriptures and break it down, slow cook it till that meat is falling off the bone. And that's that. So <clears throat> let's go to the scripture that he was yelling about. We're going to read it and then we're going to break it down with understanding. So this is uh, John 1. And we're going to start from 10. All right. I'm sure everyone's read John the first chapter. And if you haven't, then you got some work to do. Right. John 1 and 10 says, He was in the world, the he being Yahweh Shai. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Okay? Now, so these goofy Christians will read this and they'll then break it down that that's trying to say that basically the Lord came to the Israelites and the Israelites rejected him. And so then he um, opened up salvation to anyone from any nation according to the seed that would believe on him which there is no prophetic foundation in that belief. There's no prophetic foundation. Right? Isaiah, Jeremiah, you name the prophet, would not have not spoken in that regard. So let's, let's break it down real and proper. So it says, he came unto his own and his own received him not. Now, when it says it came unto his own and his own received him not, does that mean that all the Israelites um, didn't receive him? Like, what does it actually mean when he said he came unto his own? Another question would be, did because we know the Lord himself physically, he was preaching in Judea. Did the Jews in Judea represent all of the Israelites that were in the world? No. The Jews of Judea represented a remnant of the kingdom of Judah that remained in the land 
as well as a few sprinklings of the northern kingdom. But we know through the history that many of the southern kingdom were scattered through Asia Minor, right? Because of um, the Hellenistic period mainly and other captivities. And we also understand that the northern kingdom, to the most part, was scattered to the other end of the earth, which in the, which is in the Americas. So when Yahawashai actually physically came and presented himself before the people, he didn't present himself before all Israel, physically. Right, so he came to his own and his own received him not. Now, if this means the Jews, then we got questions to ask. All right, this is the book of Acts, right? <clears throat> four and one it says as and as they spake unto the people and this was peter and john which by the way peter and john were israelites and they received the lord yeah and as they spake unto the people the priests and the captain of the temple these would have been all israelites yeah and the Sadducees came upon them being grieved that they taught the people and preached. What people were they teaching? The people of Jerusalem, which were Israelites. And preached through Yahawashai the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them, the Israelites, and put them in hold onto the next day. So you had Israelites, the Sadducees, and the, and the Pharisees, wicked ones, who rejected Yahawashai, who were laying hold on other Israelites, Peter and John, who were preaching Yahawashai. For it was now even time, even tide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word, many of who? Is this talking about heathens? Many of who? Many of the Jews that were in Jerusalem, which heard the word, many. Yeah? Not, not one or two, many of them which heard the word believed. <laughs> And the number of the men was about 5,000. Yeah? So were they Israelites that received Yahawashai? Yes. Were they Israelites that rejected him? Yes. Okay? Another example. Acts 3 and 12. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people. Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? And why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man walk? Right? Now I'm going to skip down. So you already seen that he's speaking to Israelites, right? Um, I'm going to get verse 19, then I'm going to jump down. It says, this is what he said to the Israelites. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Remember that. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. All right. And he shall send Yahawashai, Hamashiach, which before was preached unto you, when the heaven must receive who whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. What does the word restitution mean? Let's look at the word restitution. What is going to be restituted? Restitution means restoration. The restoration of something lost or stolen to its proper owner. Who who was lost? <laughs> who was lost and don't say mankind otherwise you're getting blocked yeah who was lost the scripture says my people have been a lost sheep it was Israel that was lost because they fell into the way of idolatry right and as lost sheep they went astray and it is Israel who is prophesied to be restored that's what the word restitution. When it says the restitution of all things, it's talking about the restitution of the nation of Israel in every capacity. Yeah? 
We're going to be restored in, and renewed in every capacity, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So this restitution has been prophesied by all the prophets. And what did all the prophets speak of? The day when Israel would be restored, which is why when you go to Acts, second chapter, And we read, <clears throat> sorry, what am I doing? Not Acts 2nd, Acts 1. Excuse me. Isn't there a button to go? Here we go, previous. Right, Acts 1 <clears throat> and 6. It says, when, therefore, when they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore, yeah, that restitution? again the kingdom to israel right now what was what what were what had caused israel to be lost sin what did jehovah come to do redeem israel from the sin and the curse of the law um another scripture comes to my mind uh, jeremiah 30 uh, right jeremiah 30 and 17 says for i will restore health unto thee and i will heal thee of thy wounds right does, does not the scripture say you have a shy shall rise of healing in his wings saith the lord because they call thee an outcast saying this is zion whom no man seeketh after and what does this say here even the blue letter bible is letting you know that this scripture is talking about what the restoration of Jacob that's the restitution of all things that Yahweh has come in to bring right thus saith the Lord behold I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents so does that represent the Jews only because these goofy Christians always like to talk about the Jews but the Jews did not represent Jacob's tents Jacob's tents represent all of the tribes when when the the, the tribes were in their tents dwelling in the wilderness was there only jews that's a question for you for you um you christians out there no there was no such thing as the jews you had an, an encampment with the tents for all the tribes yeah surrounding the tabernacle that's what it represents when it says jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places and the city shall be builded upon her own heap and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and i will multiply them and they shall not be few i will also glorify them and they shall not be small their children also shall be as aforetime and their congregation which is which is erroneously um translated in the new testament as the word church and their congregation or assembly shall be established before me. That's the, the congregation that the Lord is establishing, the tents of Jacob, the Israelites, the elect, the 144,000, and the rest of the believers, the faithful ones, the Israel of God. Yeah? And I will punish all that oppress them, which is what, which is what um, vocab Malone is running from. Yeah, that's why he don't want to come out. The fact that he and his people and the other nations have oppressed the Israelites and, and the Lord has declared in his majesty and power that they shall be punished. And they have no loophole. Yeah, they're going to do the time. And that's that. And their nobles shall be of themselves, meaning we're going to have sovereign and independent leaders. That's the 144,000. Not like now we have puppet leaders, Boulay members. Yeah, that's who's leading our people right now, Boulay members, members of the Boulay. Yeah, <laughs> and Biden and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. Who's that governor that, that the Lord raised up? Was it not Yahweh Shai? Matthew uh, 2, 5 to 6. And I will cause him to draw near. And he shall approach unto me. For who is that? Who is this that engages his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? 
and ye shall be my people, which another way of saying that is you'll be my sons. And I'll show you that. When when the to say for the Lord to say you are my people and for him to say you are my sons is interchangeable and synonymous. The sons of God are the people of God, and the people of God are the sons of God. And this is one in the same, and that's the seed of, of Abraham. Okay? And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. This was the promise which was made unto Abraham concerning his seed. And his seed was Isaac unto Jacob and the twelve tribes. That's where the, that covenant rested. It didn't rest on nobody else, and no one can be inserted into that covenant. That's not how contracts work. Vocab. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> again, let's go back into it. He came onto his own and his own received him not. Now, we can be a bit more laser guided and bring up the account of when the Lord was teaching at Nazareth, where he was from. Right? And many of his hometown did not receive him. That's true. But that doesn't mean that other nations can be saved. <laughs> okay. Let's not let's not um stretch it out like you know, like some chewing gum. This is Mark six and one. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? Is not this the carpenter? Yeah? The son of Mary? Yeah? The brother of James and Joses and Judah and Simon? Because the Lord had four... Uh, biological brothers two of which became um, his disciples and two didn't and are not his sisters here with us which they didn't mention and they were offended at him yeah you know they they didn't show him no respect because as far they were too familiar as far as they were concerned Yeah, that's right, brother. Psalms 82. Did I not say to Israel, ye are gods? Yeah, and Yahweh Shai um, quoted that himself. Yeah. Um, but Yahweh Shai said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kind, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Yeah, which unbelief isn't something which is which is um, <laughs> um rare in Israel's history. Okay. And he went round about the villages teaching. So yeah, the Lord did come to his own, and many of them received him not. That's the understanding. Okay, but what does the scripture say? But as many as received him, as many of his own, of his people, the many of Israel that did receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Why? Because he was fulfilling prophecy. This is a see, when you read the scriptures, you can't read the events of Yahushua's life and not understand that Yahushua came to fulfill. See, if you, if you read it by itself, then you can start doing what vocab and then man do and start stretching it and applying your own uh, goofy goofy um, doctrine. But if you understand that everything that Yahweh Shai did was to fulfill the will of his father, to fulfill prophecy, you would then say to yourself, well, what does this mean that he's, he's, he's given people power to become the sons of God? Is there precedent? Is there... Any reference in the prophecies in regards to people becoming the sons of God? Yes, there is. <laughs> and we're going to get it. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, meaning they were preordained and chosen. 
the elect born in the spirit. Yeah? So is there a precedent for why Yahawashai was sent to give particular men, which were of his own, that believed on him, the power to become sons of God? Well, yes, there is. Right? Because what that's talking about is the adoption of sons. Now, let's get Romans 9, and then we're going to get Galatians, and we're going to get Hosea. Right? The adoption of sons. Now, what does it say here? Romans 9 and 3. It says, For I could wish that myself were accursed from um, Hamashiach, from my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, and to whom pertaineth. Let's look up the word pertaineth. Pertain. Be appropriate, related, applicable to. <laughs> so the things that he's about to list are applicable to the Israelites and the Israelites only. Right? Let's have a look. The adoption. The adoption is Yahweh Shai bringing them back as sons, right? Yeah, let's look up the word adoption. Strong's G, 5206. We are the seer. We are the seer. <laughs> adoption, adoption as sons. That relationship which God was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites in preference to all other nations. <laughs> the nature and condition of the true disciples in Yahawashai, who by receiving the Spirit of God into their souls become sons of God. The blessed state looked for in the future life after the visible return of Yahawashai from heaven. All right. So the adoption of sons, and it tells you quite clearly this was the relationship that the Lord had established between himself and the Israelites. And now with the Israelites who believe are being restored to that relationship. Now, you might say, oh, I'm just saying that, but I'm going to prove it. Let's go to Galatians. <laughs> Let's go to Galatians now. This is Galatians 4 and 1, right? Let's read. Now, I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But is on the tutors and governors until the time appointed of his father. Okay, because that's how it was in the ancient world. You know, you'd have servants, right? These were grown men, you know, men with understanding, right? And you'd have servants which, which would have varying degrees of authority within your house. Now, if you had a son, your son would many times be under the authority of one of your servants. Because he has yet to become a man yet. You know, he his his judgment is not matured. So he would be actually, even though he's the heir, and one day he will rule over all, he would actually be under the authority of his of certain of his father's servants, trusted and, and matured servants. And that's how it was. Okay. Even so we when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time, and when it says we, it's talking about the Israelites, right? Okay. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman. Oh, and in these goofy people take that to say, oh, it's virgin birth. Listen, everybody's made of a woman. You goofy. Come on. There ain't no one on this earth that is not made of a woman. <laughs> okay. Because... <laughs> if your father put the seed in your mother and your mother through the womb fashioned you okay 
like the womb fashions a child it grows in the womb okay that's what it means it don't mean nothing to do with no virgin birth you goofy because that's not the only time it is mentioned of men being made of women goodness gracious anyway made under the law to redeem them <laughs> what <laughs> listen very carefully yeah to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoptions of sons let me read that again what was the purpose of yahweh shai we know the scripture said he shall save his people from their sins this is matthew 1 and 21 luke 1 and, and 68 on down yeah to redeem them to buy back to redeem them that were under the law who who was under the law at the was the whole world under the law no have i got it here i'm gonna get it that we might receive the adoption of sons why did we if 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 why did we need redeeming from under the law in order to to be adopted as sons what what happened did something happen see this is why you can't read the scriptures and not take into context the history why why is paul saying this what is the history behind why the messiah would have to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoptions of sons because ye are sons god have sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying abba father why well i'll tell you why because the israelites being the sons of god and the children of the most high the lord made a covenant with them and that covenant contained the law and if we kept that law we would be established but if we neglected the law we would be cursed and part of that curse as we're going to read in hosea is the lord basically disowned us he put us out there in in in, in the wilderness put us out there in the cold but he always prophesied a redemption to redeem us back to him that we may be his sons again yeah let's get deuteronomy the 29th chapter let's start from verse 10 right of course you need to go back and read all this stuff like you can't like i said you can't truly understand the the, the um, new testament writings until you've read all of the old testament writings you, you need to be reading the scriptures okay <clears throat> this is um deuteronomy 29 and 10 ye stand ye stand this day all of you speaking to the israelites before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders and your officers, with all the men of Israel. Yeah? Your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water. So that was the heathens. They were they were actually heathens that were among us, but they were servants, they were slaves. Okay? And the Lord blessed that. Yeah, we could have servants and slaves of the other nations, right? That's why you hear about the mixed multitude that came up with us out of Egypt. They were servants. They were slaves among our people, okay? Thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath which the Lord thy God make with thee this day, speaking to the Israelites, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself his sons and that he may be on that he may be unto thee a god and he and he have said unto thee as he have sworn unto thy fathers to abraham to isaac and to jacob and this is key you have to understand that the sole reason why the lord made a covenant which contained the law with the seed of israel was because the lord had already established a covenant with abraham isaac and jacob to make the israelites his sons and his people yeah you have to understand this yeah it wasn't like 
you know, one day the Most High just decided, oh, these people here, you know, he threw a dart and the dart hit an Israelite and he's like, okay, these are going to be my people. No, it was already set up in the spirit because he had already made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob concerning the seed of Jacob. And that covenant can never be broken. He promised Abraham, listen, your seed and we are that seed, which is why he sent his son to 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 restore and establish that seed to keep that oath that he made with abraham even though we broke the covenant the lord is going to keep his covenant because the lord is not a man that he should lie it says neither with you only do i make this covenant and this oath but with him that standeth here with us this day before the lord our god and also with him that is not here with us this day Right, so that's talking about this covenant is that that was the Lord made was with all the seed of Israel unto all generations. So even them Israelites that were scattered among the nations that didn't know they were Israelites, they were still under that covenant and the curses. Do you understand? <laughs> For ye know how we have dwelt in the land of egypt and how we came through the nations which he passed by and you have seen their abominations and their idols um wood and stone silver and gold which were among them lest there should be any among you man or woman so israelite man or israelite woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the lord our god so all the Israelites, right, were supposed to keep the law, beginning with the work, with, with basically thou shalt have no idols, yeah? To go to serve, to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood, right? Because that individual or those people or that family that starts idolatry, it starts growing, it becomes a cancer. And then before you know it, the whole nation is taken in idolatry. And well, you know how that ended. <laughs> we, we down bad. That ended with us on some ships, um, pissing and shitting and, and vomiting in ourselves. And look at us today. Yeah, that's how that ended. It didn't end well. It wasn't a, a, a good choice. And, and it come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse that he bless himself in his heart saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart to add drunkenness to thirst, right? Because it's a curse. You can't worship idols and do wickedness and come out the other side of it smelling of roses. No, because there's a curse. And the curse is strong. And if you don't believe the curse is strong, just Go on world star hip hop, man. <laughs> and the Lord will not spare him. But then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel. According to all the curses of the covenant that are written in the book of this law. Okay, and then it goes on and on and on, right? So our people were entered into a covenant with the Lord, and as part of that covenant was the law, and if we didn't keep the law, we would receive those curses. Okay, now let's get to Hosea 1, because what happened was eventually our people did um, were taken in idolatry, right? Beginning um, now. It happened many times, but dealing with the book of Hosea, Hosea was around during the time of the Assyrians leading into the Babylonians, etc. So his prophecy begins in those times, right? So we're going to read Hosea 1, right, and get some understanding. <clears throat> Shalom to all the, the Archim that's locked in. Hosea 1 and 1 says this, the word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Biri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, 
kings of Judah and the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, the king of Israel. So at this time, Israel had already been split into two kingdoms, the king, kingdom of Israel, which comprised of the 10 tribes and the kingdom of Judah, which comprised of Judah, Benjamin and the remnant of Levi. Yeah. Now, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea and the Lord said unto Hosea, go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms for the land have committed great whoredom departing from the Lord. Now, is what the Lord's talking about is spiritual whoredom, which is what our people are given unto. Right. That's why the, he calls these churches whorehouses. Right. And not just these churches, the, the, the anywhere that Jake dwelleth. Right. Whoever they're into Islam, the mosque, those are all whorehouses because you the J if you're worshiping these other idols, or not other idols, but worshiping idols, these other gods, you're committing the act of adultery, you're you're committing the, the spiritual act of whoredom. Okay. And our people had begun to to um go into that way, beginning with the kingdom of Israel, right? So he went and took Goma, the daughter of Diblium which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of, of Jehu, and will cause, cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Right? <clears throat> and it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Right? And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto him, Call her Laura Hama, for I will no more have mercy on the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. So that prophecy was fulfilled when the Assyrians came and took down the kingdom of Israel. And that's how pretty much the, those tribes were removed wholesale out of the land. Which is why when you come down to the time of Yahweh Shai, it you it was being referred to as the Jews or Judea because the 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 other ten tribes had mainly been removed out of the land. Right? Hence why Yahweh Shai said, Other sheep I have which is not of this fold, because he knew you had those Israelites that were scattered abroad. Um again, John the eleventh chapter, they will he will um uh, save the children of God which were scattered abroad yeah but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God and will not save them by bow nor by sword nor by battle by horses nor by horsemen now that prophecy came to pass because when the Assyrians came against Judah um, the Lord discomforted the Assyrians at night in the camp by way of angels and the Assyrians fled. So the Judah, the kingdom of Judah, the sovereign kingdom, did not go into captivity under the Assyrians. Now it says, Now when she had weaned Luroma, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name Lower me, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Now, why is this being said? Because eventually Judah themselves did enter into idolatry. As their sister, uh, um, uh, um, Israel did, and and this is spoken about in Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Isaiah, how the kingdom of Judah followed the kingdom of Israel into idolatry, and that's why they the, the, the it was prophesied for the Babylonians to come against. Um, what was the thing I was thinking about scripture just now? <clears throat> Yeah. Scripture. <laughs> I believe. See if I can find what was how does it go again? Um I think it's scripture that basically says there's as there was as many idols as there were cities in Judah, man. Uh, 
Yeah, come on, man. That's always going off, man. It was, it, it was going off. I gotta find that scripture later. If any brother knows that scripture, they could put it. But there's, there's a scripture that basically says that they, as 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 many cities as as Judah had, that's how many idols they had, man. They were they were going in with idolatry. If I can find it, if I can't find it, then I have to leave it. I think it would have to be in like Jeremiah or something like that. Can't find it. Like yeah, if I find it, then I'll post it. Because you know, that's a good scripture, man. They, they, I'm sure it was, it was. I'm just probably remembering it erroneously in my mind. I'll have to find it another time. And then I'll post it as a post because it's a good scripture. But yeah, basically it is it's documented, man. Like Judah went heavily into the idolatry. So then basically the Lord said, Listen, man, you ain't my people no more. Ain't, you know, aka you're not my sons, man, because of their doings. The scripture says, Your your sins are oh so, hey, the water, man. Gabal Yahweh I found the scripture. Let me just pop that in. I bet it don't sound nothing like what I said it as well. <laughs> yeah, the human brain is a mad thing, you know that. <laughs> I probably jumbled and jangled it up, butchered it up. Okay, see, instead of idols, it says gods. See, um, this is Jeremiah 11 and 13. For according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal? So, yeah, the water for that, you know, the water Arkham. Um, that's the scripture I was thinking of that perfectly um, breaks down exactly what happened, man. Judah fell into the way of idolatry, you know, and the scripture says, Thy sins have separated thee from thy power. Okay, so hey, where we was? We? Where's, where's, where's Hosea? Oh. Right, so it says, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God, okay? Now, remember, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for Israel to be his people, and and he would, you know, be you know, be their, their God. But because we broke the law, we came under the curse, we fell from that, we became lost, yeah? So let's read what was going to happen. It says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, because that's prophesied it's it, the lord promised um promised uh, uh, abraham that his seed would be as the sand of the sea now according to the curse we would be destroyed we'd be rooted out as a people so the lord had to lift that curse how do you lift the curse through forgiveness of sins because it was the sin that gave the curse the power yeah Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor number. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, a.k.a. you are not my sons, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. So what, what we're seeing being prophesied here was that our people would be lost, our people would be rejected, down bad. But the Lord would still come and fulfill his promise and his word unto those people and grant them the blessing of being the sons of God and him being their power. Hosea 1 and 11, then shall the children of Judah, the sons of Judah, the southern kingdom and the children of Israel, the northern kingdom be gathered together. Yeah, being brought back into one and appoint themselves one head. And they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Yeah, so it's telling you that they're going to come back together as one nation, right? And they're going to be restored as the sons of God. 
That is what Yahweh Shai came to do. But as many as received him of Judah, of Israel, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. Okay? Even when you go into Hosea, the second chapter, what does it talk about here? <laughs> what does it talk about in Hosea, the second chapter? The restoration of Israel. Yeah? You see it there? That's the mercy. To fulfill the mercy promised. Remember, in the book of Luke, it says that Yahweh Shai came to fulfill the mercy promised. This is the mercy that was promised. And I will sow unto her, un, her unto me in the earth, her being Israel, Israel. And I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, thou art my people, and they shall say, thou art my God. Yeah? Yeah, Yahweh Shai came to fulfill that mercy towards the Israelites. Okay? Oops. Okay. Luke 1 and 72, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, vocab might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life the new testament and thou child shalt be called the prophet of the highest for thou shalt go before the face of the lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins right <sighs> is what it is man it's just true okay which is why when we go to revelations 21 right it says what it says yeah ye revelations 21 and free and i heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of god is with men what men new jerusalem the Israelites, because the Lord always intended for his tabernacle to dwell among Israel. That was the covenant. The covenant which was made with Abraham. The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Right? This statement is the contract. They shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. This contract goes all the way back to Abraham and is consistently referenced. Yeah? And it's consistently referenced for a reason. Because the entire gospel is based upon that promise that the Lord shall not fail. That he, we shall be his people and he shall be our God. And Yahweh Shai came to fulfill that through redeeming us by redeeming us from the curse of the law and establishing a better covenant which is the new covenant with us the seed of the covenant yeah so them guy Volcom and them don't know what they're talking about because no other nation is a part of this covenant they were never a part of it and they never shall be right the believers the faithful ones of Israel, the Israel of God, shall be delivered and they shall be a root. They shall be the root of the nation. They shall be the first fruits. All right. Through them, the nation shall be restored. Restitution. Okay. And it is what it is, what it is man. All right. Now, if you're new to this and you want to get further understanding on the seed of Israel and so forth. I do have a playlist. Right. If you come to the GMS Fear the Most High um, channel, you pop down to, you, you go to playlists. I've got a playlist that's called 
where is it they shall be my and they shall be my people right and it if i come add this or this if you if you go through these videos here you're gonna get the understanding on the covenants and you know the lord choosing the nation of israel and what that means and how that applies to the gospel and yahweh shai yeah you're gonna be fully edified trust me just go through these videos here and you're gonna get if you don't get it then guess what man the scripture says <laughs> if this gospel be hit it hit to them which are lost i can't help you All right so i made this play this here i mean this is the kind of this is what vocab don't want to deal with we ain't just gonna scream and shout and act crazy because that's what they try and portray us as that we just scream and shout and act crazy no i sit very calmly and uh, we bring out scriptures and we come with more angles than lomashenko yeah we all we all over the place with them scriptures man they don't know what to do they're getting hit from all angles with this one feeling like feeling like um <laughs> what was it the, the um <laughs> what was my man's name again walters man feeling like walters man in the corner like nah i ain't going back out there man no mass i don't want no more too many angles too much punishment yeah that's this uh playlist right here so if you want to learn more about you know that statement this is a very powerful statement in the scripture and they shall be my people which is ultimately synonymous with they shall be my sons it's the same thing then um check that out <laughs> yeah vol crab malone man you're my fish too anyway um yeah like hopefully this has been um edifying you know the if to hell with christianity they don't know what they're talking about okay goofy we got the truth um stick to it and believe in it and have faith and that faith is gonna see us through to the end and beyond okay don't worry about the incredulity of them that come against us okay if i before i go let me show you how goofy these guys are <laughs> Because I went on Volcab's um, video, right? And you got all these goofy Christians in there just agreeing with this dude. And it's like, you guys are unlearned. And I guarantee you, all these goofy Christians that's agreeing with Volcab Malone, shalom, shalom. they don't, like to give all praises on they don't um, know the scriptures. If you was to question them on the history and different things like that, they don't know. They're just going along with Vol Volcab because they're good little slaves, man. And they love master. Like you go into the comment board, you know, it says, "Oh, look at this guy, Apex the King," as the so-called Hebrew Israelites would say, "Confounded." Good job, fam. How is it a good job? Just because the scripture said as many as believed doesn't mean it's talking about um, you heathens, because there ain't no heathens that believe, and you got vocab is proof of that. He no, a uh, he heathens don't believe in the supremacy of Israel. No, they don't. You, they don't want to believe. That's why the scripture says that um, he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh because these heathens that are in Christianity don't believe in the gospel. They believe in a corrupted version of the gospel because when you tell them the truth of the gospel, they don't. They don't believe. They don't want to believe it because it excludes them. How can you believe in something that excludes you? Think of it. That's crazy. Of course, an Edomite, an Edomite can't believe the gospel because the gospel ain't for them. Why would you believe in something that's not for you? That's retarded as hell. So there is no heathen on this planet Earth that believes the gospel. Well, you believe? What well, you think they want to believe? They're going into slavery. You think that makes them feel good? You think they're gonna wake up every day and 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 filled with faith? No, they're gonna hope that that's not true. So they're going to fight it and they're going to live in their own delusion. And that's fine until they have to go into slavery. The end of the day, the, the this truth, this good news, the truth of these scriptures, this gospel is only for the seed of Israel. And we're the only ones that can receive it because it's for us. This guy, Volcap, how can he admit that salvation is only for the Israelites when he knows damn well within his spirit that he ain't one of us? <laughs> so he got to come with the cap. Yeah, and, and that's all right, man. We understand. 
here we go look they don't want to love thy neighbors they want to argue well tell that to to the to the crypt the your christian forefathers that put the negroes hispanics and native american indians in slavery and slaughtered the native american indians did they love their neighbors so i'm saying this is all this goofy stuff but look at the reality of christianity and these edomites they don't love their neighbor when did they ever love their neighbor but everybody wants to talk about us and what what have we done this is telling the truth man and we hate the evil and esau edom is evil he's made to be hated all right um look at this here carol b you know she's just some overweight black woman <laughs> for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting life amen that's talking about the israelites yeah <laughs> that's the world the world that god the god loved is the israelites again okay? deuteronomy 7 and 6 yeah the lord the, describes israel as his fervent lover the lord never declared his love for no other nation than the nation of israel even the queen of sheba had to accept that and said that wow the lord loved israel because he gave solomon to be their king so what are you talking about um there were some other goofy people look at this guy excellent work look at this goofball <laughs> people are goofy man Uh, I mean, uh, okay, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. There's just loads of Christians in there, like clapping and look at this idiot here. First, it was Esau is a so-called white man. Now it's Gentiles cannot be saved. Wow, these dudes make up a lot. How have we made? What have we made up? The Gentiles, which are the seed of the other nations, can't be saved. Only the Israelites that are scattered among the Gentiles can be delivered. And that's scriptural. We didn't make it up. And Esau is the so-called white man. What the hell are these people talking about, man? Isaiah 56 and 6 is talking about the Israelite foreigner. So they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Anyway, that's it on that. These bare, goofy Christians, man, clapping clapping, and, 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 and capping for this dude, man. It's, it's, it's funny. But they're going to be destroyed. See these, these two clowns here? They're going to be destroyed in America because they're going to go down with Esau. They're going to go down with this goofball. Can I imagine hanging around with this guy? I'm sorry, man. Wow. <laughs> you down bad. Jake, you down bad when you're on. You're hanging around with goofy dudes like this. <laughs> you're down all the way bad. But anyway, um, I think I want to do another video, but I'll leave that for tomorrow. I want to go into the aspect. Another aspect we spoke about at camp, which is. um being clean and unclean and how that pertains to israel and the other nations so yeah we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna lord we'll get into that tomorrow so hopefully this has been um this been edifying you know call hello you know double honesty apostles and elders a great millstone and uh shalom to all you brothers man that's teaching and uh the water to the archim for dropping them them scriptures and helping a brother out man you know, goodbye, Yahweh, the old and brothers, man. Shalom, shalom.